This hourly segment is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet, committed to quality and value since 1955. One station making history every day. Chicago, Chicago. Now, Jake Hartford. I have this, this plan. I call it the the Hartford Eating Healthy Experience. Hee <laughs> hee. Everybody, good morning. It's 508, 8 past 5. 52 minutes before the hour, 6 o'clock. I had to work that one out. I know, you're you're probably just as much surprised as I am that I'm here this morning. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Uh, the, the, the crazy drivers were out this morning. I was talking to Patrick, and he had a crazy one. I had a couple, uh, including one guy, passed me on Lake Street going almost 50. And he had to go in the opposite lane where Lake is a two-way street to do it, too. Anyway, we're, I'm going to be with you for the next three hours. That's the plan. And there is, a, there is a lot of stuff in the news this morning. The president is in town. At least that was the plan last night. He wanted to work in his garden. I know. I know. He, had a, he, was, he was here for some fundraisers. And at one of them, he said he was he wanted to go home, cook a little food by himself, work in the work in the backyard. Which by the time he got home, it was dark. Who's who's working in the backyard, cutting the grass? And this is the second time he said he has said this when he's at a fundraiser. He needs he needs to uh, upgrade his uh, his remarks. I, I can imagine he hasn't been at that house in I don't know how many years now. Whatever's in that refrigerator has got to be moldy. I don't know. I don't know what he was going to cook, but it has to be moldy by now. Anyway, he's in town, so if he's listening, good morning, Mr. President. Hope you had a fun day yesterday. You raised three million dollars in Chicago. We like the cash cow for him. I'm coming back to Chicago for some money. Anyway, 591-8900 is the phone number. Let's go to Paul in Arlington Heights. Good morning, Paul. Well, good morning, Jake. But actually, I'm still up here in northern Wisconsin. Uh, maybe I'll have to come home for some fundraising of my own back to Illinois next week. Uh, oh, you're going to have to vote on Tuesday. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'll already be back home on Tuesday. I tried to get that absentee vote, uh, but uh, it didn't work out. 
But now that you mentioned voting on uh, Tuesday, you know, last Monday on Memorial Day, when you substituted for Rowan Roper... There is no substitution for Rowan Roper. Well, I realize that, but you did an admirable job anyway. But uh, your first guest was the uh, lieutenant governor from Wisconsin, uh, Rebecca... Cleefitch. Cleefitch. Yeah, Rebecca right. Cleefitch, yeah. Very nice person. Well... You know, they're running ads. She's running ads, you know, in order to get reelected uh, to uh, lieutenant governor. I got to tell you, Jake, I don't know if you ever see what uh, saw what this lady looks like. She is a very attractive woman. She kind of looks like Marie Osmond. And uh, that wouldn't be the reason why I would vote for the lady. But just so you know, you were talking to a very attractive woman. She used to be on TV. Really? Yeah. Well, I, I could see why. I mean, she she's very easy on the eyes, no doubt about it. So, uh I hope uh, she's uh, successful in her uh, uh, election on Tuesday. And I was, was going to tell you also, I don't, I'm sure when you go into the cities like Milwaukee and Madison, you're going to see a lot of uh, Barrett uh, lawn signs. But around here in northern Wisconsin, the majority of the signs here are for the current uh, Governor Scott Walker, no doubt about it. Uh, he's very popular here with the, with the uh, political signs on the lawns here. All right, so Jake, I think for the last two weeks I've haven't given you any celebrity birthdays. I don't. So, ca I don't care about celebrity birthdays. You really don't. I really don't. Well, I got three big ones if you don't mind. It would have been. Well, see, I just told you I mind. And now you're coming back with celebrity birthdays. Oh, but Jake, they're good ones. All right, give me the best one you have, and I'll determine if it's good or not. All right, I'll start for the bottom. Work up. Today is the sixty uh, fourth birthday of Jerry Mathers, the beaver. That's the best one you've got? Well, I can uh, get a little bit of improvement by saying today's also the drummer of the Rolling Stones, Charlie Watts. He's 71 today. That's better. Uh, now, give me the best one. Johnny Weissmuller. I think he was a, a Chicagoan. If he was still alive, he would have been 108 today. The, probably the most famous of all Tarzans. No? No. <laughs> now, I, now, if this were like Thursday, it was Clint Eastwood's birthday. That's something different. Well, there you go. And on a sadder note, Jake, I, I'd like to bring up the fact that last Tuesday, March, apart uh, March, May 29th, was the one-year anniversary of the passing of one of my favorite uh, radio personalities, WLS's own Tom Roser. Uh, Keep him in your thoughts. I mean, he was one of my favorites. Your former, uh, you know, you're just host. you're just starting the show off on a downer. Well, <laughs> I'm going to make you the last caller of the oh. show, not the first. <laughs> well, well, Jake. At least I kept this in mind this week. At least I'm not uh, using you as the WLS complaint department like I did last yeah. week. You know, you just just you just started the show off on a downer. Well, <laughs> time to go now, Paul. All right, Jake. Bye. -bye. Have a good week and bye. And now I'm supposed to go to something upbeat after a one-year death memorial. The Wisconsin election. I, I can't wait to see the, uh, the results Tuesday. Because I remember talking on this very show months ago when they were out getting the petitions to get on the ballot. They have the recall. I... I remember people saying, you know what, the unions are really going to show that people are going to be mad and whatever. And I said, go ahead. I encouraged it. Pass out those petitions. Get on the ballot. Have the recall election. See what the people think. And they did. They got almost a million signatures to have the recall election. I hope, I really hope, that Tom Barrett gets at least 900,000 votes on Tuesday. I really do. Because if you had 900,000 plus signatures, I would hope everybody that, that signed, a petition, signed the petition to have the ballot, have the election, votes. Because it is costing the, the taxpayers of Wisconsin 15 to $20 million to hold this election. And the ironic part is, what got everybody ginned up was the bargaining with the unions and, and this and that, and that's not an issue. Now they're just talking about who's, cre who's created the most jobs. Is that why you had a recall election? 
because you're arguing over who created the most jobs? I don't think so. And all this is going to do is make it harder next time you're going to, anybody wants to have a recall election. Because that's why you'd have it. I mean, he, the governor and the lieutenant governor were elected in 2010. They, they, had two more, they have two more years on the term if they make it past Tuesday. Imagine having a recall election because, I don't know, I think we needed more jobs created than was created. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't spend 15 to $20 million. Taxpayers are looking for every dime nowadays. And they're, they're blowing 15 to $20 million on this election. And, if, and again, if Barrett doesn't get the 900000 plus that signed the petition, I would, I would take everybody, I'd take everybody who came out to vote, check the records, check the petitions, and anybody who signed the petition who didn't vote, I'd put them in the newspaper. That's what I would do. I would shame them. Shame, shame, shame. Tom and Morris, good morning, sir. You're on 89 WLS. Hey, I think I know a good reason why Obama is uh, insists on going to his home this time. Why? Because I think he realizes that Mitt Romney maybe maybe went and beat him, and he has to go back home sooner than he's expected to. He's got to get everything ready for him so he, he can make his easy transition back to, into his house. I don't know. I just don't. I don't ever see him living there again. You don't? No, I don't. I think that if he chooses to move to another house after he gets out of office, it's going to be somewhere where it's like, uh, like out in the country or something like that, to to where he can't disrupt like all the neighborhoods when he's around. Because even when he gets out of the White House, he's still going to have all that big protection and the Secret Service detail and road closures because he's around. And the neighborhood's not going to be liking that too much. He's going to go somewhere where there's a golf course. I predict. You think so? I do. Yeah, he goes. He does love to play that golf. He likes likes that golf game. Yeah, but that's all I had to say, though. All right, thanks, Tom. Take care. You're welcome. Five eighteen. Awake with Jake. It's a Saturday morning. It's going to be a beautiful day. Hard to believe. Last weekend it was over. What almost a hundred? And then all of a sudden, uh, was it Wednesday or Thursday? It got down to run in the fifties. Wow, huh? Chicago weather. Anyway, it's 518, back after this on 89 WLS. This is Chicago's Talk Leader. Somebody's got to take a stand. I agree with you, but you can't duck the issue. Bring it on. I'm an avid listener. Point to the fact. I'm not a victim. Put up or shut up. I agree. The best thing on radio. I had a comment. What I think is causing all this recession. In our 89th year, entertaining Chicago. How can that be? 89 WLS. Two great minds collide on the eve of World War II in the hit play, Freud's Last Session. Step into the study of Sigmund Freud for his unforgettable meeting with celebrated writer C.S. Lewis. Experience their riveting conversation about everything from sex and love to God and the meaning of life. A smash in New York. Freud's Last Session at the Mercury Theater. Tickets available at mercurytheaterchicago.com, the box office, or call 773-325-1700. Tune in to The Mortgage Radio Show here on 890 AM WLS this morning at 11 AM. The Mortgage Radio Show, hosted by Kerry Kasem and mortgage expert Alex Michaels, brought to you by Network Capital Funding Corporation, will help you find the right mortgage product for your needs. The Mortgage Radio Show will provide you reliable information, up to the minute interest rates, and most current loan programs available. Get the tools needed to make sound financial and mortgage choices. Tune in this morning at 11 a.m. on 890 a.m. WLS, the Mortgage Radio Show, your number one choice for mortgage news. Soon this little baby I'm singing to sleep will start to walk. First, she'll crawl. (laughs) Then take her first baby steps. Before I know it, I'll be dropping her off at school. I'll be watching her run down a soccer field. Staying up all night, waiting for her to get home from her first date. Wincing when she steps on the gas pedal and then the brakes. Beaming when she walks up to accept her diploma. Or holding back tears as she takes those big steps down the aisle. But before she takes all those steps, she and thousands like her will need you to take yours. 
Gather your family, friends, and co-workers and join March for Babies to help make her steps possible. Start your team today at marchforbabies.org. Welcome to today's lottery drawing. And today's winning numbers are not yours, not yours, and another number that's not yours. And the final number is not yours. When it comes to having money, don't rely on luck. Brew your own coffee at home instead of buying that latte. Brown bag it to work instead of ordering it. Go to feedthepig.org for more free ideas on how to save. Feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Are you comfortable with your financial future? You will be. Listen to Securing Your Financial Future with Goldstone Financial Group this Sunday morning at 8. News from across the country and around the world is moments away with an ABC News update on 89 WLS at WLSAM.com. 522. I know, Jerry Mather's birthday. The Beaver. And the best line was was the wife talking to the husband saying, Ward, you were very rough on the Beaver last night. Nice Beaver. Lots of, lots. Thank you. I just had it stuffed. Let me help you with that. That's a that's a whole other movie. <laughs> it's that's uh, was that from Police Story? Was that what the, is that not Police Story? The, not uh, Naked Gun series. Yeah, yeah. Leslie Nielsen, who was a uh, good actor, serious actor. Then he became a comedian and did very well. Uh, Bob and Buffalo Grove. Good morning, sir. You're on eighty nine WLS. Good morning, Jake. I just wanted to check in, say hello. And uh, tell you, I was downtown last night to see uh, President Obama. Were you at the fundraiser? Uh, no, but I was across the street. You ready for this? Indirectly. Um, my niece is getting uh, married today at the um, Col- Cultural Center. Congratulations. And the rehearsal uh, for the wedding was supposed to be at the Cultural Center last night. But guess what happened? No way was it going to be at the cultural compass. And uh, moved us across the street uh, to uh, the Gallery 37. And uh, we had a bird's eye view of uh, the uh, caravan coming in. Of course, it was a little difficult to get to the um, uh, Gallery 37 uh, on uh, Randolph Street because they had the streets blocked off, security and all of that. Uh but we did manage um, to see uh, the caravan uh, go by. I tried to get a good picture of him, but uh, as they were leaving the cultural center, uh, the the caravan and the SUVs, the presidential SUV that he used, uh, went zipping by so fast. Uh, the picture that I took uh, is totally um, totally blurred. But it was you know interesting to see you know all the um, security. Um, in front of the cultural center was a unique sight to see on Michigan Avenue. When did they tell you that you had to go do your rehearsal somewhere else? Um, How much I notice did rem- they give I you? I can't remember when that actually surfaced, um, but um, you know, just the, you know the security and all of that. Um, on Michigan Avenue, it was interesting to see how they protected the building. Um, there was just bumper to bumper garbage trucks to serve as a wall, I think, um, so that uh, anybody placing a bomb or somebody wanted to um, drive through um, could not get uh, access to the uh, cultural center. But it was really was weird to see all these garbage trucks lined up along Michigan Avenue, um, bumper to bumper. And, and the, and the uh, fundraiser there was a relatively cheap one. Yeah. It was like $2,500 a piece, and I think there were like 300 people. Yeah. I think it was, uh, actually, it was, I think, only 1,000. Really? And then I also watched. watched All that for 1,000? Yeah, I think something like that. And then, you know, of course, I saw a few um, uh, protesters, uh, nothing really any significant. Um, but, uh, you know, there was a few crazies out there, a few people with Occupy Wall Street signs. There was a few people with... Um, um, 
you know, the uh, Polish protest, but nothing to, you know, nothing of any, um, you know, like I said, the you know, significance that would, you know, be disruptive. Or, well, you know what? I don't, I don't blame the Polish people for being upset. Oh, that was a gem, wasn't it? Especially here in Chicago. To say that and then to come to Chicago and say that. I swear he has some he has some of the most inept people working for him. How could they possibly have said that? They d- you know they did that and I always tell the story back when, when the first big ceremony he had medal ceremony was Billy Jean King and they screwed that up yeah. cuz they got it right out of Wikipedia. And then the other one that surfaced of course yesterday I was li- you know listening to the radio and soon as the um, the job numbers broke and uh, when they said sixteen, what's it? Sixty was it sixty nine thousand? Sixty nine thousand, but they lost seven thousand jobs, so it was really seventy thousand in the private yeah. sector. When I heard that, I said, "How are they going to spin this?" I said, "I know they're going to spin it, okay, but how are they going to spin it?" Well, they did already. I saw it yeah. on the White House blog. Well, it was what twenty three straight months of job growth. Yeah, right? it was it was Bush's fault. <laughs> I saw that in the White House blog, and then it was, well, you know, we could have saved five, we were saving five million jobs a month. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable. And it's Europe's fault, because Greece is unhappy. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, uh, uh, there's a stuff, there, there was, um, you know, one sign, oh, I wish I could remember what it said. It said something about indict, Ob- oh, yeah, it said it, in, indict Obama drones, because, of course, we got the controversy over, um, Holder, and uh, oh, that was the interview I saw this week. That maybe you saw it on TV. They were interviewing various African uh, American congressmen, and they, uh, somebody put a microphone up to him. Says, "What do you have to say? And uh, do you know about Fast and Furious?" And the responses were, "Oh, isn't that a movie?" Yeah, I know. All right, thank you, Bob. Okay, have a great week. You too. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Yeah, that whole Polish thing, uh, the, when he said the Polish death camps, it was the Nazi death camps in, in German, you know, occupied Poland. He, the White House first kind of just brushed it off, and yesterday it was reported the president sent a letter to the Polish prime minister and offering his regrets. But there's a backstory to all this. You know who they wanted to receive the medal of, of the of the... It was it was the World War II resistance fighter, the Polish resistance fighter, who was who was honored with the medal. But you know who they wanted to physically accept it at the White House, and and the Obama people said no, Lech Wałęsa, because he was too politically controversial. Here is a guy, high school education, was an electrician in Poland, fighting the communists, the Soviet Union when the Soviet Union was in its power, and and he helped turn Poland free and he he was the perfect guy to have at the White House and the White House didn't want him. Too controversial. Okay. Just stick it to the Polish people. You know, last week we were talking about uh, the former mayor of Washington, D.C., Marion Barry, with his slur about Polacks, quote unquote. And then, the, and then the Polish people get it from the president this week. Ah, it's a good week for Polish people. Anyway, more to come. It's 529 Back after this on 89 WLS.